Hi, is this Jason Curtis? It is indeed. Hi, it's Suzanne Vega calling. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Not too bad. They make you do your own calls these days. It's not quite on. <laughs> well, sometimes it's easier than, uh, you know, uh, having them try to get through to me. Yes, true, so, true. Uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, well, I, I, had, I actually spoke to you um, on the last album, um, and I think you were at home at the time. Um, yes. But, uh, as I say, um, good to have you back. Thank you. Not that you were away. As I say, unfortunately, in South Africa, you are far enough away to, to be back, if you know what I mean. Right, exactly. But, um, as I say, let's kick off. I'm not absolutely sure how much time I have. You probably know more than I do. Uh, I think we have 20 minutes. Great, excellent. Well, let's uh, cut straight into it, if we can. Sure. Um, obviously, um, a new song and a best of album. Um, whose idea was that? Um, it was both mine and the record company's. Um, actually, I had gone to the record company about three years ago and said, well, I've had 10 years in the business, and so I was thinking about having a retrospective. Mm. And then instead, I I didn't do that, and um, instead I came out with the Nine Objects of Desire album. Yes. Uh, so they came to me um, now and said, would you like to put one out now? And I mm. said, sure. Mm -hmm. So it was a... Because a lot of the time it can be a case of the record company wanting to do it, but I think it's... It's a uh, it's it's perfect timing on on your part because uh, as I say it's as you say it, it has been um, what five albums down and uh, and now time to reflect is that how you feel? Yeah, I do. Mm. I mean, although I like retrospectives in general, so I probably would have. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, every time I do a song, every time I do a show, it's a little bit of a retrospective for me because I have to look back over everything I've written and figure out what I want to sing mm. that evening and pick out the the best of for that evening. So mm. I'm constantly looking back and figuring out what still holds up. Mm. And the new track that you've got on there as well? There's two new tracks, yeah. Two new tracks, right. Do you want to tell us about One's those? Called, sorry? Sorry. No, no, uh, yes, carry on. One is called Book and a Cover, and the other one is called Rosemary. Mm. The, the one that's released as a single is called Book and a Cover right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those songs written um, since Nine Objects of Desire? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And... Any, any history with those songs, short of them being just new tracks for the compilation? Yeah, uh, Book and a Cover was originally written for a movie. Um, when the movie was called The Truth About Cats and Dogs, and yes. they, using, they used the song Caramel, but yes, uh, right. mm -hmm. the, the actual idea of the song was meant for the main character, right. who is sort of judged by how she looks and how she presents herself. Yes. Um, so it was an idea I had started fooling around with back then, and then uh, I kind of, I still liked it when it came time to figure out what I was going to do for the two new songs for this record. Because mm, 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 so. mm. I can remember um, at the time of Nine Objects, that was the same, well, pretty much close to the time that The Truth of, About Cats and Dogs came out. And I can remember you mentioning um, Book and a Cover then, but I don't think it had a, I don't think it had a working title at that point. But, uh, oh, really? Yes. Um, but uh, so I know that you were not more excited, but you were as excited about that track, which is great that it's now um, you know, now being released, which I think is, is fantastic. But, um, yeah. And uh, also, well, Rosemary was actually a song that I had written and, and uh, recorded the music for at the same time that I had done Nine Objects of Desire. Okay. I just had never finished the lyrics, so finally I did finish the lyrics and then released. That's what that is. That's okay. sort of a, right. an extra one from Nine Objects. Okay, and then um, did uh, did Mitchell produce on these two two tracks as well? Yes. Right, right, right. And um, so, say in actually putting you know putting all the tracks together um, for this, uh, did you find that it was it was a difficult process, or sort of an you know in in including all the tracks that you wanted to, and perhaps putting in a few that weren't so obvious, obviously short of the singles. Um, it wasn't difficult. I mean, now I look back and I wonder maybe if I could have put in cracking or taken out a couple of things. But for the most part, it was it was obvious. The list that the record company came up with was similar to the one that I'd come up with, mm. except that I put in the Queen and the Soldier because I know that the audience is like that one. Right, right. Uh, I think and Caramel, I put that one in because I know that audiences like that one too. Mm. Mm. So. Uh, it wasn't difficult, but it was interesting to listen to all the styles back to back. Sure. 
I mean, it was sort of a jolt, even for myself. I mean, I've written the songs. I know what they sound like. And to hear them all back to back and hear the different uh, musical styles that I've been through over the years is a bit, was <laughs> yeah, a little jarring at first. <laughs> uh, to hear Blood Makes Noise right next to Small Blue Thing. Yeah. Know, I think it I, it works for me. But on the other yeah. hand, it, it takes a minute to get used to it. And it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it shows you, obviously, what, you know, from, from whence you've come to where you are pretty much now. I mean, it, as you said, it can be, it, it must be quite enlightening as well, sort of seeing that progression in one foul swoop. Yeah, it is. It's it's interesting. It's a bit like looking at um, pictures of yourself from high school. You know you're the same person mm -hmm. within yourself, but the way you're dressed is a bit, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, uh, it can be a bit... Uh, jarring here and there because sure. maybe you're wearing something back then that you wouldn't have that you wouldn't wear now mm. that kind of thing mm. to me the production of the music is is more like the clothing and the songs themselves stand alone as they always have mm. so uh, some of the production on the early albums i have to say don't quite you know they rub me the wrong way mm. Mm. Uh, and mm. i prefer the later ones mm. 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 but there you go and it's it's an interesting group of uh, songs i thought um I enjoyed listening to some of them more than I thought I would, mm, mm, mm. and some I wanted to skip over. But <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, sort of so. putting putting rest to uh, to demons, perhaps. You know, I mean, small little yeah. ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. But now, I mean, you you're in a precarious position now. Um, I, I always sort of feel that with a, you know when a, a best of uh, is, is put together because everyone is sort of, you know, in a state of flux waiting to see, you know, where you'll go to from here. Um, you know, do you have um, sort of a basket of, uh, of tracks that you, you know, have got ready in, in the sense that, um, you know, of a direction of, of or where you're going to be taking things from here? Um... Not a clear one. Mm. I mean, I, I always start with the same game plan, mm. literally. I mean, for every record I have sat down and said to myself, well, I'm going to write 12 songs based on the acoustic guitar with melodies mm. and choruses and, mm. you know, relatively normal sounding songs. And then it always veers off into some other direction mm. that I don't always feel I have control over. Mm. Um, but I would like to get back to the acoustic guitar and back to songs that I can play myself. Mm. Uh, without the production mm. and to spend a little more time on the lyrics and, and really just spend time with it so I can get it to be satisfying because I, I uh, have the uncomfortable feeling I've been cutting corners a little. Mm. Not that my audience complains or not that the record company complains. No one's complaining at all. But I myself have a feeling that I the songs are not... I, I'm not satisfied with them the way I'd like to be, the way I... Um, and so that's, that's my only... Uh, Mm. direction that I can think of to mm. spend a little bit more time with the lyrics and, and have them be based on the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's actually, in a way, going full circle. Yeah, it does feel a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Mm. Because you are, you know, to say that, correct me if I'm wrong, but you are currently part of the, uh, the whole uh, little theater as well, aren't you? I did a couple of shows with them, yeah. Right, right. And, and what was that like? It was great. It was really great. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed all three years of the, the shows that I've done with Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, the first year I performed with her, it wasn't being called Little Fair. It was just her on tour with a bunch of friends, you know, yeah. a bunch of women, and so we all performed. Mm -hmm. uh, then the, by the second year, it was called Little Fair, and it was making headlines and mm -hmm. playing to 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. uh, and this year, it was the same thing. It's just very pleasant feeling of, uh, <laughs> because it's so successful, mm -hmm. and everyone mm -hmm. wishes it well, uh, for the most part, except for, you know, there's always the sort of inevitable backlash, but sure. this kind of, um, uh, she's wanted to make a celebration of women in music, and I think that's what it's actually turned out to be. So sure, you probably find that the backlash came from men. <laughs> well, not, not, not... Not so much as you'd think. I mean, mm. there are actually a lot of men come to the show and really love it. Mm. I mean, there's women in the audience and women on stage, and a lot of men like it. Mm. <laughs> you know, they come to look at the women. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, it was great, mm. and um, and that's fine too. But no, a lot of it, the backlash comes from women mm. uh, who feel they don't want to be categorized in that way, or uh, you know, she's gotten criticism from various 
point. Tor Tori Amos didn't want to join because she felt like she was too much of an individual to inflict her own thing on uh -huh. anyone else. And I guess uh, Ani DeFranco didn't want to do it because of the corporate sponsorships and mm -hmm. uh, this and that. And yeah, and then Cheryl Crow also pulled out as well, which I think was for different reasons as well. Mm. Yeah, I think it was for different reasons, more mm. more personal ones, more yes. to do with uh, her being on the road and, mm, mm, mm. and that kind of thing. But I enjoyed it. I like being part of it, and I like um, the, it's different now than it was last year. I mean, now I think when once they added the Indigo Girls, it really became much more of a tribal thing mm, because they would mm. bring people on stage, and I I like their music. I'd never really heard them before. Mm. But I mean, it must have been interesting also for for fans of your music coming to see you, but then also their fans. Uh, you know, possibly being exposed to to your music, which you know wouldn't have otherwise happened. Yeah, I found that it was an easy match. You know, a lot of people um, seem to know my music already, mm. and uh, it was you know even though they have a different sort of crowd, I, I think it uh, it was it was good matching. Mm, mm. That's how I felt. Mm. I mean, I, I I wish I could have played with a band, and I wish I could have played, uh, uh, but on the other hand, I was you know, happy to be part of the whole thing. It's, mm. It was a novel experience for me. Mm. But as I say, I mean, moving back to the tour that you did with uh, Nine Objects, um, obviously, like you were saying, the the live experience was important to you in putting, well, in selecting the tracks that you did for, you know, for the best of. Um, as I said, that, that whole tour, um, what was that like? Was, was that a good tour for you? The Nine Objects tour? Yeah. Um, yeah, most of it was good. I mean, it was a bit stressful um, because I had a full band with me, which I thought was a great band, and I really loved playing with the band, and I love uh, the music that we made. Um, but I think the audience, especially depends on where you go in the world, but especially in England, where I spend a lot of time traveling there, a lot of people seem taken aback by the, still seem taken aback by the production. By the sounds on Blood Makes Noise, and mm. by you know they they liked it acoustic. You know mm. they like it the way mm. they like what they like, which is uh, the image of the girl with the guitar singing introspective songs and uh, something like Blood Makes Noise. They're not crazy about, and mm. Mm. so there's a bit of a, a thing about that. But I found in some of the countries where I hadn't been to so often that they loved the new song. Mm. Mm. Um, Mm. But it was a bit of it was a little bit of a strain because I had a full band and I had my daughter with me. Mm. Mm. And there's always the risk of like uh, people getting sick, which happens a lot when sure. you're on tour. Sure. Twelve people on a bus. Mm. Yeah, the more. A bit wearing. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, mm. I, I think it's interesting as well, you know, um, through your career so far, is that each album that you bring out, um, I think certain parts of your fan base become. Uh, will they have their favorite album and then they will have their um, their favorite moments and the more albums that you you create the more albums you release I think that it, it must become a little harder because you're trying to please I mean at this point you know you're bouncing between five albums that have that have this tremendous growth um, yeah, there's a lot of diversity to it yes yeah. and and each each fan out there um, who's a um, uh, went and bought out, uh, bought the first album. The first album is their favourite, and then going along to Solitude Standing, and then having maybe a completely different audience or a new audience on top of that, embracing that. So you know, as as you go and as as you develop, um, the audience grows, but then they tend to become a little more fickle. Yes, and and the other thing is that every um, every as you said, everyone has their favourite album, and mm. then. Uh, some people can't see it as a whole. Mm, you know, exactly. They can't see it as a. It's like the blind, the five blind men who are trying to feel the elephant and mm. say what what the elephant looks like. Mm. You know, and one will say, well, it's round and fat, and the other one will say it's long and thin, mm. depending on whether you've got a hold of the trunk or its leg. Mm. Um, <laughs> so it it is a bit awkward for me. I've got a situation where you have young people who love blood makes noise and they want to dance and and. Mm. and come up to the stage and then other people just want to sit down and they're much more sedate they're sort of older mm. uh, and they want to hear the lyrics mm. and so I've got crowds of people I mean I've literally had it where one half of the audience is telling the other half to be quiet <laughs> um, or, or the, one half is telling the other half to sit down mm, mm, uh, mm, mm. half the audience is running what we're like mad and then the other half is like trying to control the other half yeah yeah so from the stage it's an interesting Sure, sure. Viewpoint to mm. try and get everyone to just 
you know, calm down. Yeah, and, uh, mm, mm, because because then people could always say yes, but um, by by virtue of the fact that you, that that you have grown, um, you confused your audience in the same breath, you know, which is not not the fact, you know, because as I say, there's a there's a progression there, which is great. But now, when 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 you look at the album, uh, well, the the best of um, as a snapshot, would you say it's 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 a good reflection of, of yeah, things? Yeah, I do think it's a good reflection. I mean, I, I suppose if I didn't have to include some of the singles, it might leave more room for some of the other songs that I felt were more interesting artistically. Mm. Uh, a song like No Cheap Thrill or Book of Dreams, mm. I, I wasn't sure about those. We did release them as singles, and so mm. I felt we should include them. Mm. Um, but to me, they weren't as Right, as spot on as a song like Cracking, which had mm. meant a lot to me when I wrote it, mm. but it's not one that a lot of people know. Mm. Mm. Um, so, but overall, I'd say it's fair. I'd say it's it's a good it's a good snapshot. To, you know, it's a good uh, it it shows what I've been up to. Mm. For obviously for for fans of your music, and then obviously also for you know a new audience who is maybe just curious as to to what you're about, but. To this point, maybe haven't bought an album. Right, and that's kind of what I was thinking too. I love for me if I'm curious about someone, but I I don't want to invest on all five of their albums. I'll get the greatest hits mm. because I I figure there's got to be something good on it. You know, mm. I, I feel it's a safe bet, mm. and mm. so that's what I was doing too. Was kind of putting the songs I knew people knew from the radio. Most people have heard Tom Steiner at least or Luca. Yeah, sure. Um, and then put in the other songs that I felt that people would like. Mm. Um, but, you know, again, it's, it's kind of a, I, I guess I'm a rather eclectic person. I mean, because mm. the people who love Blood, Blood Makes Noise are, maybe won't like Small Blue Thing, or the people who love Small Blue Thing won't like Blood Makes Noise. But then in the same breath, they may, but to this point, may not have heard either of those tracks, and uh, as I say, it may, it may cause them to go and revisit those albums, which is, which is fantastic. Yeah, mm. that would be great. Mm, mm. So, Dan, could I ask you one last favor? Um, I'm going to be putting this out um, on my radio show, as I did with the last one. Um, we didn't get an ID last time, um, I think because I, was, I wasn't bold enough. But <laughs> um, if I could um, just ask you, perhaps, uh, the name of the show um, is very cliched. It's called The Cutting Edge. Um, okay. And if you could uh, just play with that. Sure. Hi there, this is Suzanne Vega, and I'm speaking to you from the cutting edge. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, listen, thanks very, very much. And uh, I know last time you did threaten that you would perhaps um, come down to uh, our neck of the woods, and um, I'm still going to hold you to that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, still, I still think it would be a, a treat of night. Um, and as I said, there are certainly enough people here who are supporters of, of of what you've done to date, so perhaps uh, it's, it's one to pencil in uh, for the new year. Okay. Lovely. I'll definitely keep it in mind. Great. Thanks again for your time. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Bye now. now.